Cool. Hi Lloyd, thanks Hi. for coming down for us. Thank you very much for asking. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, we just, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, the new Big Band album. That you've done. Yeah, Driving Force. Yeah, it sounds really good. Um, how did it all come about? It came about because I got to an age where I thought I want to do something of my own, you know, working for other people so for so many years. And I think um, I've recorded several other albums and I've worked with a lot of big bands over the years, but never actually recorded anything of my own. Which is my yeah. own. So I chose the numbers, got the arrangements, and uh, Jeff Castle, the keyboard player, helped me with the on the day. I've got the best musicians I could get, as I think you'll agree, the, yeah. the album is a fantastic album. And um, it just happened. We went in there and played. They, they read the parts and, and what you hear is what is what you get. So it's all one take stuff? Mm -hmm. like yeah, it was all one take. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. I mean, you've got to try their very fast number, which yeah. is like 100 miles an hour. That was done in one take. And I thought this is not going to work. I thought, you know, I'm going to, someone's going to fall apart on this. Because you, you've only got a fraction of a second that's going so fast that at the tempo, it's sort of... It's a hell of a speed to keep up, you know. And um, I thought, this is going to go wrong, but it didn't. And at the end of it, I went... And I've got several people in the control room. And I said, was that okay? Did that work? So, yeah, spot on, great. And I thought, oh. And when we come to mix it two weeks later, um, I thought, that's the one. I was going to sound rotten. I know it is. But it didn't. It sounded fine. And I was convinced in my mind that what you're hearing behind the kit isn't actually what necessarily what goes out the front. It's yeah. better out the front. Yeah. But the album's getting a lot of airplay as well. I'm very pleased. I, I learnt uh, yesterday about uh, the James who's promoted it had um, a call from Chicago. Yeah. Um, and they're playing it in Chicago. Or they want to play it in Chicago. They, they, they want a copy of it. It's being played in Sweden and Japan and Germany and Ireland and England as well. It's been playing in England as well. So you on Jazz FM? Is yeah, a lot of Jazz FM. Yeah, a lot of stations. Uh, BBC Scotland, Jazz FM, Radio 3. Jazz lineup, yeah, it's 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 it's. I'm very pleased with it. What we're planning to do is is to wait until June and then launch it the whole world, take take it around the whole world. Yeah. James is going to to um, you know send them all off to everywhere, Russia, because yeah. there's a market in these countries. You know, I think we're inclined to think that England is the only market in the world. The British are very much like that, aren't yeah. they? You know, everywhere you go, I mean, I'm going to Tenerife next week, and I I, I can't speak Spanish at all. But they'll all speak English, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everywhere you go, everybody speaks English. So I think we're all assuming this is it, you know, but it isn't. Yeah. Somebody, I've known bands in the past, in the 60s when I first started playing with bands, often people would be playing abroad and in a band and play to five or six thousand seater venues. And then when they come back here, they couldn't get a job in a pub. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, there's a big world out there, France, Germany. And so in the beginning, um, you know, when you started, what drew you to drums? Why drums? By accident, I was working in a film studio um, and I'd left school. I started quite late and I was working in the film studio and a guy came up to me out of the blue and he just said, do you know anybody who, who can play the drums? We need a drummer for our band. And I just thought, that sounds easy. I'll have a go at that. <laughs> and um, I went out, on, that was on the Thursday, I borrowed £10, 10 shillings from my mum. And um, anyway, I went out on the Saturday morning and I bought a, a snare drum and a pair of sticks and uh, got it home and didn't know what to do with it. I realised you didn't play the bottom because it had a thing going across the bottom of it, so I thought, I can't play that. So on the, on the Monday was the first rehearsal with this guy's band. And I turned up, and it was in a room very, very much like this, it was a classroom. And there was an accordion, which you don't see anymore now, and a couple of guitars in the corner. So I walked in, all I had was my drum in a brown paper parcel, wrapped yeah. it up, I didn't have a case. So anyway, uh, so I went over there, and I can remember, I can see them now, they went, where's the rest of the kit? And I said, quickly, I said, I, couldn't, I can't get on the bus. And they said, I didn't have a car. They said, no, we'll set it up then. They said, and what we're going to do, we're going to record you playing uh, with this Grundig tape recorder. Remember the old Grundig yeah. reel to reel tape recorder? We're going to record that, you see. So I thought, well, you're wasting your time, because I haven't played, I only bought it Saturday, but I didn't tell them that. <laughs> and we did a number by Bert Weed, who I've since played for a couple of times, but we put it and this Burt Whedon number is called Guitar Boogie Shuffle. Yeah. So it went boom, 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 pedestrian. And they started, and I sort of didn't know what to do, so I just went. <laughs> and it was nothing without the motion. And anyway, we got to the end. By a miracle, I stopped at the same time as them. Yeah. And they, there was silence in the room, and they, and they looked at me, and they said, you can't play, can you? And I said, no. I only got it Saturday. And then they said, well, we actually only know Guitar Boogie Shuffle one number, so you got the job. <laughs> so I went, I, went up, I went up to my mum, she said, how'd you do? I said, I got the job. She said, blimey, it must be easy then, must not it? Of course, I had since realised it wasn't. I started getting lessons and 
I began to take it very seriously and uh, I made my hands bleed actually for practicing. Really? Until the teacher told me about these and then uh, it became a bit easier. But really I didn't smash <laughs> <laughs> the old jokes, but I, I smashed my hands up, you know. But then, but then it just took off, and then I, I decided that's what I wanted to do. And within two years, I turned professional, if you can call it professional, and therefore went, you know. And that was it. So, here I am. Early influences. Where are we at the moment? Is it Northampton? Uh, yeah, Northamptonshire, Brackley. Northamptonshire, oh, Brackley, all right. Never heard of Brackley. Before. No, no, <laughs> okay, no, not many people have. But I you have. will. You all know. you people out there, whatever you are watching this, will know that Brackley is not far from the M40. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee Smith here, the local wizard gum teacher, actually drives 100 miles an hour. And I had trouble keeping up with him. <laughs> All I could see was smoke coming out the back. <laughs> I Sorry thought, slow that. down, Lee, slow down, I thought. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, um, I just uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you sort of practiced and had teachers and stuff, who, who were you really into? Well, I think the usual, you know, the Buddy yeah. Richards, Louis Bells, and Gene Cooper. I went, I'd been playing about three months, and I went to see a film called Drum Crazy, The Life Story yeah, of Gene Cooper. Gene and I sat there thinking, wow, that's what I want to do, that's, that's where I want to be. And there's an overhead shot, Sal Minio played the part of yeah. Gene Cooper, and he had the big tom -tom, 18 inch tom toms, you know, and, yeah. and, and um, floor tom toms. And uh, he was pounding away doing sing, 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 and I thought, well, that's what I want to do. I want to become a famous drummer one day, you know, that's what I want to do. And I, and what happened? <laughs> Went wrong on the way. Just, just um, you know, to finish off. Uh, obviously, you've had a, a really nice teaching career. Taught some, taught some good people. For young people that are watching this, in just a few words, what makes a good drummer? I think keeping time is very important. To be able to play time and not to play too busy. Um, keep it simple and play for the tune. Sing the tune. Learn to sing the tune. It was Phil Seaman famous uh, British drummer, who in my opinion was probably the greatest British drummer, um, jazz drummer certainly, and Phil taught me how to sing the tune, you learn how to sing a song, if you can, if you can carry a melody in your head and then play that melody on the drums, yeah. it's going to sound musical, you can't get lost, I think it's very important that you play musically, you don't get in the way, you, and you play a good solid beat and good time, and inspire the band, inspire the guitarists. The cameraman's a guitarist, today. <laughs> so don't all about these about guitarists. And um, that's what I would say makes a good drummer. Okay, cool. Well, as I said, yeah, thanks very much for coming down and Thank taking you. the time to talk to us. <sighs> Not only does he drive 100 miles an hour, he's broken me in. <laughs>